Okay, so uh, the topic today, what I'd like to present is a Bluetooth low energy DOE communication system for medical applications that including implants and also uh, body worn devices. And also another new topic is uh, called AMBAN, this medical body area network system. All right, I don't want to be that person over there, way too many sensors. But as you see that, uh, you know, we have a lot of sensors and also implant, and it would be nice that we can have iPad or iPhone uh, to monitor to see what's going on. And uh, the reason people like this because uh, iPad and iPhone does have Bluetooth, so hopefully that we can have a communication between those. The next one is actually it's disappeared on me. But it's the um, life critical medical device. Actually, we have the ICD or pacemaker, and hopefully that the system is sort of reliable enough so we can use the iPad and also the iPhone uh, to communicate and monitor those devices. Um, but before I Turn to the next slide. Uh, I assume that you guys have iPhone, right? So lately, that uh, if you see at the back of the iPhone, it does show the, the area of the antenna. If you know that, you should not hold the antenna, and you will see why. So again, um, uh, the main reason for the BLE is actually we have how efficient, and then the highly secure industry elite uh, privacy and stuff. So this is a, we, we do have very promising, you know, option here for the medical implant application. The latest one is a Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth 5. Overall, it's better than 4.2, especially that you can have a low data rate. So let's say that you have 125 kilobit per second. Uh, the sensitivity will go down to minus 103. So sometimes your application, you don't need to use it. To make a bit, uh, to make a bit per second. We do have the challenges for BLE. The first thing is because of body loss. You know, at this frequency, the body loss is humongous. Okay, and that's one of the reason that you have microwave oven use the same frequency, the 2.45 gigahertz. So this we call the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. Another problem is we have, the, this frequency spectrum is way too busy. We have Wi-Fi system, and uh, recently we have wireless power charging using the same frequency. We have microwave oven and some other stuff. So that's one of the reasons that why that we will talk about the M-band today. Because M-band is actually from 2300 megahertz to 2400 megahertz. So outside of that uh, BC frequency spectrum. <coughs> this is just Wi-Fi channel. You have a lot of different, you have 802, uh, B, G, and N. So this is a common one. So normally if you go to the hospital and you have spectrum analyzer, you sniff uh, the RF at the hospital, you will see the channel 1, 6, and 11. And those three channels actually is a non overlap channel. But those three channels will take away 66 channel from uh, 79 channel of the ISM band. And this is the worst one. So you have 40 megahertz <coughs> channel if D2 will take almost everything. And for wireless power charging, they take the whole frequency band. And you will see that that is something that you need to be cautious. So I just mentioned, because the uh, you know, ISM band 2.4 gigahertz is way too busy, FCC has approved the allocation for a 40 megahertz spectrum bandwidth. And we do have from 2360 to 2400 here, the catch that if you in a, uh, or at the healthcare facilities, you use this frequency here from 2360 to 2390. As soon as you step outside of that hospital or facility, health care facility, you have to switch to this frequency band. 
Uh, you don't have to. You can switch back to uh, the VLE if you want to. Uh, so this is actually another option that you need to, uh, you know, take into consideration when you do, uh, you know, if you need the wireless capability for your device. Okay, this is good stuff. A lesson to learn from cell phone system. The reason I want to show this first because everybody has cell phone, so it's easy to understand, and also. Uh, for example, where's my phone? My phone is, uh, and in fact your phone probably has the same problem. The antenna along the edge of the phone, and that is a Wi-Fi antenna. So as soon as you hold the phone like this, it will take away 15 dB, and that means it's 97% of the power. So, let's talk about cell phones so everybody will understand this. What is the lesson to learn from this? Uh, to use a hand effect. Normally when, you know, cell phone industry, they measure the cell phone in air. That means no hand, no head, no people. Uh, you can see the antenna efficiency pretty good. About 80% right there. And by the way, that uh, this data actually we measure at the uh, element facility, right? No, no more Northwest CNC. <laughs> a very good facility. It's easy to work with them. So this me. Uh, so they put me in a chair in that chamber room and spin me around and measure the efficiency. So let's say that I hold the phone, but I intentionally not cover the antenna. So yes, I hold the phone, but I don't cover the antenna. The efficiency is went down to 35%. Okay? What happens if I hold the antenna? If my whole antenna went down to 3%, that's not nice, you know? So now if I hold the phone and right next to my head, 0.3%, what kind of system is that? Almost at power gone, right? A cell phone can afford this because they have power. I don't know that you know this or not, but the power of the cell phone at the low frequency is about 2 watts, so 33 dBm. But for the BLE for medical applications, we don't have that luxury. Normally, it's zero dBm. So that's something you can see the effect of the hand. Uh, if you can avoid that or design a system that you don't have to worry about. Now, so if you know the antenna, and just simply doing this, you can go from 0.3% to 16%. That's pretty good. Without doing anything, right? And the main reason that I will talk about wireless uh, far field, wireless power charging, if you know how to hold the phone, you don't have to charge your phone way too often. So you don't even need the system. And uh, probably that company won't like me, but that's a fact. So we talk about the efficiency. What happened to the radiation level? Uh, and again, um, Element have this facility, and we uh, did a measurement there. So it's called SAR, stands for Specific Absorption Rate. So without use of hand, and this is a current setup, the limit is 1.6 milliwatt uh, per gram. And so my phone is actually meet the requirement. You know, good, no problem. What happened when we put the hand? What do you think when we put the hand on the phone? What happened? I'm sorry, the level go down or go up? So if I, I if I put my hands over here, what do you expect the value of SAR? Less than one or more than one? No. Huh? Uh, no. It's less than because a lot of power get into your hand. In fact, significantly, when you put a hand like this, it went to one to point oh six. So what does that tell you? There's a lot of variation getting into your hand, right? So you say, okay, I don't care about my hand, I care about my brain. So go ahead and hold the phone that way. But when you do that, you have the power efficiency about 0.3%. So this is not good either. Uh, the interesting thing, I, 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 I found a, a one thing in common between uh, President Obama and uh, President Trump. Only one thing, though. Uh, <laughs> so in fact, <laughs> They do know how to hold the phone. 
you know, in a way that they did not go with the intent. So that's good thing. So you should do the same. Okay. So how do we measure the star? Uh, I was a member of the committee that set the standard, but I did not sign off for this because my main reason is there's no way that you can come up with the phantom head that represents seven billion people out there. And they have two positions. One they call two position, and one this is handset uh, chief position. But most of the time, I mean, right now, uh, a lot, you know, most of the cell phone now they have antenna at the bottom. So I don't think we need to go through this because I, we know that it will pass. Uh, this is not even worst case scenario. What I want to mention here, we do have two different limits. One for brain is 1.6 milliwatt per gram, and the other one for hand and you know, feet and an ankle is 4.0 uh, milliwatt per gram, but do average over 10 gram. So we don't even measure the star level of the human hair. So we don't even know that we meet the standard or not. But when you have technology, we can use a simulation. So you can see that, you know, a lot of star here and here. So how do we fix this problem? Because our current methodology won't actually measure the worst case scenario, and I show you why we need to do that. So, cute boy, but this is not the right way to hold the antenna and the cell phone. I don't know what this guy doing. <laughs> so, how do we do from here? To me, a simple design is a good one. Simple dipole a simple phantom human hand, just a rectangular box. And then what you can do is, you can see if you have this, it doesn't matter if your antenna here or here, that you can measure the worst case scenario. The bad thing is, if you do this, you can see the star, maximum star is actually pretty high, much more than here. The average is actually 10 times, almost 10 times, maybe eight times, and this. So, you need to have something that you can, you know, measure the worst case scenario. How about the star for the human hand? Actually, you could do the same phantom and you just measure 10 gram average, and then maybe you can have a correction, uh, like, uh, you know, plus one or two uh, milliwatt per gram. So you measure just one position, you can get the information for hand and also for human brain. So if I use the same phantom that we have right now, and how do we, how do we measure the worst case star? Very simple, if we know the antenna right here, we push it this way, so we have antenna closer to the brain as possible. And the good news, if I do that, it still meet the star requirement. So I don't think the industry should be very nervous about this. We just have to do the right thing. Okay, so you learned a little bit about why the human hand is so important, and we have a lesson, good lesson to learn, and we apply that to the system that we want to talk about today. So BLE antenna system, we have a external device, we have the implant device, and this is just a mock-up antenna here. So we have a little antenna here, and so this looks like a cell phone. When you do measurement, you need to take the cable loss into consideration, and that's something that you always need to keep in mind. If we measure this antenna in free state, pretty good, 85%. Very good antenna. And the gain is about four. Sometimes sometime you need to be careful about the maximum gain because if it's too much, you won't meet the requirement for EIRP affected by isotropic uh, radiation. Uh, so we need to be careful, but this is very good antenna in the air. What happens once you hold it, but not the antenna right here, if you want to remember? The efficiency went down about 50%, as we expected. And we antenna, I intentionally hold the antenna, and it actually went down to 2%. And we see that from the cell phone, right? And this is a different frequency. This is 2.45 gigahertz. Body one device. 
when they are about 7 or 8 percent. So keep that in mind. Implanted tenant, <coughs> I just use, you know, 85 percent in the infrared to simulate this. They work very well. And in fact, you use your hand to cover the antenna, you will have similar result. So the question is, is it feasible to design an implant antenna that's work for our scenario? Free state, prior to the implant, let's say that the doctor placed the device over the metal uh, tray, or during implant or post implant, the answer is yes, but you can do that. So we have that little box, yellow box there, and use my body. I don't know how, why my body that lossy, I don't know. Maybe your body is less lost than mine. But this number is a typical number for the implant antenna, minus 30 dB. So you can see the human body is <coughs> way too lossy, okay? It's not as good news for us here. So based on the antenna performance, let me run through you the uh, system and budget. And this is a mid-channel. Assume that we have two centi a centimeter implant gap and a distance of about one, uh, one meter. <coughs> Let us assume that transmitting power of the implant zero dBm. We don't <coughs> want to have more than that because we want to save energy, right? So I think it's a good number. If you take the efficiency number into the zero region. Now, I want to stop right here. Most of the time people want to use maximum <coughs> power. You should not do that because you will overestimate your system. If you use minimum gain, you won't have a system because you don't have signal. So I prefer to start with average gain, and that is the efficiency. And if we take the human hand into consideration, you remember the handheld device antenna, about minus 17.28 dBi. A free state path loss of distance one meter, about 40 dB. Now, you have to be careful when you use a free state path loss. That equation is in fog field. If you have the antenna so close, like for this situation here, let's assume that I have implant and I have an inhaler like this, it's in not fog field. So you have to be careful when you use that equation. So you add it all up, you have minus 87.73 dBm. And of course, you would like to have something better than the sensitivity. Now, this sensitivity for data rate of one megabit per second, if you want to go down to 125 kilobit per second, you can have a 10 dB better. That means it's minus 103. But let's stick with one megabit per second for now. So based on this, you are right for now. You have a link margin about 5 dB. Well, if you take a look at this, uh, system link budget, I did not put polarization loss and also fading allowance. Pol pro uh, pol uh, polarization loss is something that if you have transmitting antenna this way and then receiving this way, it's called COPO. So you have no polarization loss. But if you do this, cross point, it doesn't matter how close they are. They won't see each other very well. So I intentionally designed the little handheld antenna and what I call dual linear polarization. So if you have that kind of antenna, the polarization loss could go up to 6 dB. So for fading allowance, it depends on what application you have. If you just want to talk to your implant right here, and the fading is, is not a big problem, okay? So it depends. Whatever system literature that you have, you have to find a way to verify that. It's not suddenly pull the number from the air and hopefully it will work, right? So one way you can do that, well, before I do that, I talk a little bit about this. So you can see I use my phone here, and I do have Wi-Fi signal finder application on my phone, and in fact, I already did. In this room, you had channel one, six, and 11, and the signal string without all the antenna about minus 40 is GBA. That's a pretty big number compared to the minus 87 that you just see. Yeah. So if you hold it, what happened? Uh, the antenna location right here. So I hold this way, I have minus 55 dBm. 
as soon as I hold the antenna, it went down to minus 70. So that minus 50 magic number, you need to keep it in mind. And surprisingly, it doesn't matter what frequency. You know, 400 megahertz, 900 megahertz, it give you a similar 15 dB loss if you, take, if you cover the antenna. So keep that in mind. How do they, we verify the system link budget? So this we call mutual coupling testing. So you have a uh, network analyzer, you have a little handheld here, you have an implant here, and then you measure mutual coupling. And let's say that you measure minus 70 dB, mutual coupling, between the two device, and assume transmitting uh, power of the implant zero dBm, and uh, receiving power of the little handheld equal to zero minus 70, so minus 70 dBm. Very simple. But when you do mutual coupling testing like this, you take almost everything into consideration. Polarization, fading, multi-pattern, whatever, if you're able to do this, okay? It depends. Uh, so right now, it's very close for you. So this one good way to verify your system link budget. So now let's increase to two meter. Uh, again, this is the magic number, six feet or something, six point five, to see that we is still working or not. Transmitting power of implant zero dBm again, the same antenna gain for the implant minus thirty, and handheld the same number. <coughs> the difference is the free space head loss so now up to forty six point two two dB. Add it all up, the signal strength is actually less than the sensitivity. Okay, now receiving, I mean, receiving power is one thing. So, so for this, actually, the system is failed. But one thing I want you to keep it in mind, it depends on how reliable that you want to have. I mean, uh, <laughs> different definition, right? If I want to, my definition for a reliable system, I would like to have the signal to noise ratio more than 20 dB. But maybe you already say, greater than 10 dB is okay. It depends on your application. So it has enough signal strength in one thing, but the other thing is you have to worry about the interference from Wi-Fi signal. And that's what we will talk about. It's a nice thing if you do BLE, everything already for you. Uh, you can download the app on your cell phone. You can have implant. In fact, uh, GWT, we do have BLE and band USB dongle. Uh, yeah, this dongle can communicate with the implant, but for this system test, I connect to the implant, and so these two can communicate. So that's one of the nice things about BLE. Everything is ready for you, and then that's a good thing, but you want to keep in mind that the interference, that is a key problem here. So. As you all know that we have different system. It's called medical implant communication system. And we use a different frequency band. Uh, the original one is 402 megahertz to 405 megahertz. And the extended one is 401 to 406. And we expect this frequency band is not easy like Wi-Fi spectrum. But this is, this is the unexpected. Can a surgical Headlamp system interfere with MI, uh, MICS system? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. So what we have here is a system that we plug and then we measure in the anechoic chamber before we turn it on. Very nice, no noise. What happened when we turn it on? we have the in-band noise for that 400 megahertz. And with this noise, I guarantee what you will destroy that 400 megahertz system. Because for MICS system, the maximum transmitting power is uh, 25 microwatt, minus 16 dBm. So we don't have a lot of power to start with. And if you have a crucial equipment that generates this kind of noise, you've got a problem. 
What is the lesson to learn from this? When we deal with 400 megahertz, it's, it's reasonable to assume that we don't have this kind of problem. But we should not assume that anymore when we deal with a very, very busy frequency spectrum, like 2.4 uh, gigahertz spectrum. So that's the lesson to them. What do we need to do after this? This is a very crucial doctor need to have this equipment. So if you want to, to use an ELE system, a very simple thing, we just measure more, you know, up to that level, that frequency. So luckily for this equipment, we don't have a lot of noise at that 2.45 gigahertz. So a good thing, okay? But what I try to tell you is, if you deal with the very easy frequency spectrum, like the 2.4 gig, gigahertz, um, you know, spectrum, ISM spectrum, you need to be cautious, okay? Because as a, you know, it's like a cell phone. You have new cell phone model every six months. You don't have new medical device every six months. So when you plan to do something, you have to be cautious and take everything into consideration. And you can see that one of the concerns that I have is a co coexistent interference. So this is a 2.4 gigahertz frequency spectrum and uh, channel 1, 6, and 11 for Wi-Fi, and BLE, of course, a 2, mega, uh, 2 megahertz channel. So you have 40 channel here. But you have a lot of things going on here. You have Wi-Fi right here. You have Zigbee. You have other Bluetooth. You have wireless power charging. <coughs> the reason I mentioned about the SART testing for cell phone is we, what we need is a reliable coexistent testing methodology for a conservative scenario. Okay, if I set up the testing and I intentionally put into the crosstalk scenario, you won't see the interference. But if I put into COPO, and you will see a lot of signal from the interference network. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, I did work with FDA, and I, I, in fact, I did give a seminar at FDA a few months ago. What they would like to see is something that has to be reliable, but represent the service scenario. And I think that when they want to test for the Wi-Fi channel, they love to use the uh, 802.11n because to them, uh, 40 megahertz channel give you more problem than 20 megahertz problem. So you keep that in mind. And they did a little bit work on characterized uh, the, this frequency spectrum uh, at the hospital environment. So what we did is very simple. We went to the hospital, very small one. We used a spectrum analyzer. We turn it on a couple minutes. We uh, put the mic holes on that. And you can see pretty much you have channel 1, 6, and 11 for Wi-Fi there. And the interesting here is the signal string pretty high compared to the system link budget that we just did, minus 87 dBm something. So you can see that there is a, it is a big problem, a big concern here. And even at airport, you know, minus 75 dBm, and then if you go to your, if you do measurement at your home, depending on how close you do the system, you can have Wi-Fi channel one here, uh, and we do have microwave and Bluetooth at the same time. So, needless to say, the 2.4 gigahertz ISM frequency band is very, very busy. Uh, in 2012, I believe, uh, FDA, I think they cleared probably about 400 uh, wireless you know, uh, medical device, and more than half of that that's actually use this frequency spectrum. So what we expect is in the near future that more and more devices get into to use that frequency spectrum. So this is a wireless far field power charging system. What they have, they have the antenna array 
that can give you a game like 20 DPI, and this is the maximum they can do, 25 dBm. And let's say that you have this cell phone like 15 feet away, and they claim that their system can charge the cell phone. I don't know how efficient that is, but to me, probably not very efficient. Maybe Chris know better. <laughs> So that's what they claim, and you can get into this, um, you know, website and get more information. But again, if you know how to hold your, your cell phone, you don't need the system. But the problem is, if someone uses the system, the question is, will that interfere with the Bluetooth system for medical application? So this is a radiation pattern for that antenna panel oh. transmitting. So you can see roughly about 21 dBi. And then let's say the free space padlocks 20 meters away from that transmitter. You have 66 dB or so. But then if you add it all up here, you will receive something like minus, what? Minus 20 dBm. That number, it, it is a concern. If you have a BLE system, medical of course, uh, remember again, the receiving power roughly about minus 80-ish. If you hit this minus 20 dBm, you got a problem. Not only at this direction, but you do have maybe, maybe, but you do have silos. So the smaller silo, the difference between here and here about minus 25. So minus 20 to minus 25, minus 40 SGBM, it could interfere with your VLE communication system for medical application. This is not very nice because, you know, they use a whole entire frequency band to do this. And so this is a concern. And it, in fact, I think the FDA is really concerned about this. So, uh, this is something that we did. So it's not far field, pretty close, not the near field. But we can design a system that gives you 97%, but this is conducting loss only. So we can find some way if you still need to do power charging. Don't do it too, uh, far field, do closer, and then you can have a good system so you don't have a lot of radiation out of that. Microwave oven, it is a problem too. If you have the BLE system for medical, uh, you should not get closer than five meter. If you're closer, uh, the Bluetooth performance does, doesn't degrade. What it means is if the Bluetooth system is typically further than five meters from the microwave oven, the Bluetooth performance does not degrade. So the main thing is, you know, wireless power charging and the Wi-Fi. So it's just so much talk about how busy of that uh, frequency bandwidth uh, spectrum. So now let's talk a little bit about the M band. So M band is just a little bit outside of that 2.4 to 2. Point, uh, you know, outside of that uh, ISM band. Um, so for the medical body error network, you can have the hub is movable or is stationary. And then you can have pacemaker, you can have other sensor. So pretty much that you can use this frequency band for medical application. But in order to use this frequency band, you have to talk to FCC and FDA, hey, you know, we'd love to use this. And they will give you permission, but let them know, okay? Always pros and cons, okay? Nothing is perfect, right? So what is a con for this thing? And uh, we do have solutions for this. So again, if inside or at healthcare facility you use this frequency spectrum, as soon as you step outside that facility, you switch to this, okay? So we do have the constraint on power, how much power we can have. So for this inside the healthcare facility, you cannot go more than zero dBm. It is an EIRP, it's an equation that involves a maximum transmitting power uh, and, and then maximum gain. So this is a, this is a small, small thing. 
that you need to take into consideration. Uh, but as soon as you step outside the facility, you switch to this frequency, and then you can go up to 20 milliwatt. That's about 13 dBm. So all these things here, so I think, and I hope if I can take care of that, right? Mm -hmm. So let's look here a little bit. Uh, Body-worn device scenario. I just have the dipole above my chest here. And as you know, you remember when you have the body-worn device, uh, the efficiency went down to minus 11 dB. And this gives you a similar number for the M-band frequency. I do not expect that, you know, body loss between M-band and BLD band, you know, further apart because they're pretty close to each other. Uh, so they're similar. The key thing is, as you see, this is right in front of me, so you have more power here. In the back, you've got a problem. So the power could not go through the body. Okay, so just go to the M-Bank system in budget for healthcare facility. As I mentioned, we need to certify the ERRP requirement 0 dBm. So if you uh, send out transmitting power about 0 dBm, you should have the antenna that maximum antenna can have to less than or equal 0 dBm. We can design that way. And normally to have this, the average transmitting antenna gain is about minus 3 dB. And again, just a free state pack loss here. And average body one divide minus 11. And then add it all up. You have pretty good system at the one megabit per second. And again, I don't think that we had to worry too much about the interference for this M-band. You do have a little bit because it's right next to the uh, BL free, uh, the, the uh, ISM band. So the energy, energy will spill over, okay? But, you know, I expect that it would be much quieter compared to the BLE frequency band. So, so uh, the link mar uh, margin is pretty good. But this is for stationary, okay? What happened is, for the little handheld, the little handheld, you have to take that into consideration like you use a hand effect. And for two meter, and for body worn divide, we're still okay. That's why that when I don't know that you have a lot of Bluetooth body worn device or not, but so far that not too many people complain about that because the antenna efficiency for body worn device is not minus thirty but minus eleven. So now if we do implant. So this for stationary again. Uh, the external hub, uh, two centimeter uh, implant depth at the two meter. Uh, if you go through this exercise, you still be okay, all right? But if you switch to the little handheld for external monitor, you have a similar problem. So the link margin actually minus number here, so system will fail. So it's really depend on, do you still want to have one megabit per second or not, or do you want to go down to 120, five kilobit per second? Okay, so it doesn't matter implant of the uh, body one device just above your chest, or maybe two centimeter implant. You expect to have more power in the front and less in the back. So you see this? So here's the body, if I can have some device over here, that's what you expect to have. So less power here. So the question is, is it feasible to design an antenna system to shape the radiation pattern? The answer is yes. <coughs> so you can push more energy in the back, if you know how. I could not share that with you, it's a proprietary technology, but I just want to let you know it is feasible. Okay, so it doesn't matter that you have M-band or you have BLE, but especially for BLE system, you know the antenna right along this edge, and there's no way that you can avoid not to hold the antenna. Then how do you come up with a simple solution? And of course, pros and cons too. That can give you back 15 dB, 
of the power that you need. So this is actually a very simple design. You can design a cell phone case, have a protrusion here, that you won't hold the cell phone antenna, and you won't hold the, uh, you know, the, the uh, BLE and then because in fact for this cell phone case, we can embed the BLE and N-band diversity antenna system and also electronic RF circuit and communicate with your cell phone, okay? If you hate this so much, uh, look ugly, and you have, a as you have a choice here, you can remove it after a while that you know how to hold the, the phone. So this is, you can remove it, and we call it push-in, push-out, protrusion design. So we have problem, but we can we can come up with some solution. The simpler the better. Now this, so people say, well, you know, I want to use a phone, uh, patient phone. So you know, the company doesn't have to pay for home monitor, and maybe save a hundred dollar, two hundred dollar, whatever. It is a good money, but you have to keep in mind safety is is one of the utmost important thing. So you have to design the system that have to be re reliable enough for your application, especially for medical device. 